Oh God, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, Father. We just ask, Lord, that you would open the eyes and ears of our hearts, Father, that we may see what you are revealing to us through your word. <coughs> Lord, just bring about the truth that sets the captives free, Father. Lord, as we look at who you are and what you called your son to do. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you. In your precious name we pray, Father. Amen and amen. So, this is my favorite time of year, if you haven't figured out. Christmas is my favorite time of year. I mean, I like all times of year, but Christmas is really one of the great times of year. I love colors, and, uh, you know, I, I just love the reason for this season. Um, there, there, there was a, there was a, you know, I, I, I love the Christmas story. Um, I love everything to do about Christmas. Uh, and so Christmas to me is, is, is just that time of year where I, I sit there like I'm in the shower last night. And, and, and a lot of times I'll, I'll kind of just bring up my own Christmas songs. And I'll make my own Christmas songs up. So in the shower I'm, I'm rapping a Christmas song out. And, and so I'm like going... I'm like, God, if I put music to this, I can sing this Christmas Eve. And I said, now, now, Fred's looking at me going, I guess because I wrote a Christmas song before, didn't I? And we played it. And it was really kind of neat when I had my band, Armada, and, and we actually wrote a Christmas song, and we did it, and it, it sounded a lot, a cross between um, Ramstein, um, the... Uh, the uh, the Christmas group that does goes around and does all these plays Trans all the time, Siberian uh, huh? Trans Siberian, Trans -Siberian Orchestra. Orchestra. I mean, this was an amazing <laughs> Christmas song. And, 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 I mean, and, and it was great. No, maybe I'll maybe I'll pull it out of the archives. That's going, oh god. Because I mean, you have to understand, this was what probably ten years ago when Fred's fingers were a little bit more nimble. I mean, Fred used to shred a guitar. And I mean, we used to, I mean, it was, it, this was just what we did, you know. Because, um, again, you know, we just never do anything usual. We always have to take it to the next level. So, you know, and so, so I, I just, you know, it's great. And, and, you know, and it was really kind of funny because as I'm writing this song, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm talking about the reindeer and the sleigh and all this other stuff. And how, you know, they, they, the Santa wasn't present on the day that Jesus was born. And I'm just wrapping this out in the shower. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm really proud of myself. And I'm going, that was a great song, huh, Jesus? I know, I like that. I got to do this. So, But this, I really love this time of year. Um, and there's another big reason, because it brings up the caring that we should really have all year round. Right? And, and some of us do. Some of us carry Christmas 365 days of the year. Not because it's about giving, but it's about, it's about coming to the place where we can literally, literally receive the gift that God gave us. And that gift was the birth of His Son. And so as we start this series, Ho Hosanna, um, i got to take you down a couple little trails first to get to it. And, and 1 Samuel is going to be one of them. So this was a time when the preparation of what would be the greatest gift was underway. So as we begin this new December series, I want to look at a couple of words, one being first, Messiah. All right? Messiah in the Hebrew translates to ma Mashiach. It's M-A-S-H-I-A-C-H. -H -H, and it translates Mashiach. And this word means anointed. The word means anointed. Now, you have to understand something. We are all anointed for something. <coughs> we are all anointed for something. God has anointed us for a purpose. Every single one of us has a call in our lives. Right? So we have, become, we have become called into Meshach. We have been called to become anointed for something. All right. So as, as we begin to look at this, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna break this all down for you. The word means anointed. Now in this content, it becomes a, ma a masculine noun. All right, a masculine noun. But the root word is mashach, M-A-S-H-A-C-H. And this is the verb part because it means to anoint. So there has to be an action. 
to, to, this, to this word. All right? So when God sent his son all right, to come here, he anointed him. Now, you can't really see the big picture in heaven because none of us were there. But just imagine this. Here's the son. And the father says to the son, look, you don't know this, but I have prepared you for this time since the day you came into conception. All right? Now, you're not going to find this in the Bible. This is just my mind working at this. All right? So I'm not going to give you a verse. All right? This is just what God has kind of shown me as to what happened that day that he anointed his son to come to earth to be the Savior. And so he, he called him into play, if you would. Now, as a football coach, it was kind of cool because I would call my kids into play. And I, I coached my son's team many, many years with the help of some other fathers. And it was really kind of neat because, you know, some, some of the parents would look at us and go, well, my son's not playing. And I go, well, you hold on, your son will play. And we would call that person into play. And Jesus was called into play that day. The day that the Father knew that no matter what we did, we would never be in right standing with him. So there had to be something that was given. Amen. So Jesus was anointed in heaven by the Father to answer the call that he would become a sacrifice. But first he had to become the gift. And it's really kind of interesting how we have to become the gift before we can become the sacrifice. All right, It's kind of interesting because I had somebody the other day say, you know, I, I, you have changed my life. And I went, oh no, not me. I said, I'm only the guy that can bring you to the guy that literally can change your life. I'm not the guy. I'm not the guy. There's no nail holes in these hands. I'm not the guy. But I'm the guy that has made it my call because I've been anointed by God to do this to bring people to that person. Amen. And in bringing people to that person, he gets to bring them to a place of choice. So here's the verb. Without you, without me being anointed to call and called by God to be that person. Because honestly, you are that person as well. You are anointed by God to bring the word to those people that do not know who he is and bring them to him so that he can show them who he is and through his grace can lead them to the cross. We're just anointed to the call. We're just anointed to the call. But see, here's Jesus. He was anointed. He was anointed. He was called. And in calling, he received and he accepted. <clears throat> so it's a verb requiring an action. Now, in 1 Samuel 24, if you would go there, 1 Samuel 24, verse 1. After Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told, David is in the desert of King Gedai. So Saul took 3,000 able young men from all Israel and set out to look for David and his men near the crates of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens along the way. A cave was there, and Saul went in to relieve himself. You know, long journey, got to go to the potty. You know, so Saul slips into a cave to go to the bathroom. Well, there's David. Now, I hope that you have read the Bible before. Because in 1 Samuel 24, this is only a small piece. But I really, I really, 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 and this is one of the big things that I really need people to do is, you need to read your Bibles. Because there is so much to the stories that I use in my preaching that I can't go into because, well, I, we'd start at 7 in the morning, you wouldn't get out of here until 7 o'clock at night. And some of you would say, I'm never going to church ever again. That's the longest service I've ever been to in my entire life. But see, here's David in this cave. Now, if you know anything about Saul and David's relationship, you'll know that Saul was very jealous of David. And Saul was trying to kill 
David. David was an anointed king. He was anointed by God to serve his people. David was called to do. You are called to do. And in that God will anoint you. There's the verse that says, No weapon formed against me shall prosper, and all those that rise up against me will fall. When you're anointed by God, nothing from the outside can affect you. Nothing out there can come against you and harm you. Until you're called to be in the land. We'll talk about that later. Now if we keep going here. So Saul was in the cave. And David and his men were far back in the cave. The men said, This is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give your enemy under your hands, for you to deal with as you wish. Now here's God saying, All right, David, you know what? I'm bringing your enemy to you. You're my anointed king. Kill him. Kill him. Kill Saul. But David, David's heart would not let him kill Saul. Why? Because Saul was an anointed king at one time as well. And, and Saul had fallen under the, the, the Hebrew word again of, of Mashiach, all right? And he was anointed. And so here's David. Then David crept up unnoticed, and instead of killing Saul, what did he do? He cut off a corner of Saul's robe. He cut off a corner. Afterward, David was conscious stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lay my hand on him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. For he is the anointed of the Lord. Now, you know it's kind of interesting because if we go to the Christmas store, if we jump forward, you know, a couple of thousand years. We, we find that here's Jesus. He has just come from being in the throne room of glory with the Father. The Father has anointed the Son to become the gift that will be everything to all people. He will be the Savior. He will be the Hosanna. Because Hosanna means Savior. In the Hebrew. He will become the Savior. So, as, as we continue here in, in this, David was told that he could kill him, but he didn't. With these words, David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went away. Then David went out of the cave and called out to Saul, My lord, the king. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He said to Saul, Why do you listen when men say David has been on harming you? This is the day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lay my hand on my lord, because he is the Lord's anointed. He has been blessed by God. Please turn to 1 Samuel 2 with me. Verse 30. Far be it from me, those who honor me, I will honor. I want to stop right there for a minute. 
Those who honor me, I will honor. There it is in plain English, written down, Old Testament, right there. Those who honor me, I will honor. Those who obey me, I will bless. It's in plain English. <coughs> so, why, what, what's this thing about honor? Here's what it is. See, the Word of God says we should honor our fathers and mothers. Mm -hmm. All right. The Word of also, the Word of God also says that we should honor our brothers and sisters. Why? Because each and every single one of us is anointed, anointed by God, to be what a king and a queen in the presence of the Lord. You need to understand that. Your royalty. Hey, man. Your royalty. Amen. You've been anointed by God for a special purpose. You know, in the last series we did, we spoke about, about you know, that, that we are broken, we're cracked, we're imperfect, we're, 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 we're all of these things. But we were created for a purpose, and we cr were created for greater things than these. We were created for greater things than these. You were created for a greater thing than you are experiencing today. I, I, so far, I think this is probably like the 90th message I've used that statement in. Because I want you to understand the importance that you hold in the eyes of the Lord. You hold the same importance, as a matter of fact, here it is. You are heirs to the kingdom of the throne of glory. Who else is an heir to the kingdom of the throne of glory? Jesus Christ. So you are brothers and sisters united with Christ by the Father through an anointment that comes from where? The throne. So now that's But those who despise me will be disdained. The time is coming when I will cut short your strength and the strength of your priestly house so that no one in it will reach old age. And you will see distress in my dwelling. Although God will be done to Israel, no one in your family line will ever reach old age. Every, every one of you that I do not cut off from severing at my altar, I will spare only to destroy your sight and sap your strength, and all your descendants will die in the prime of life. And what happens to your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, will be assigned to you. They will both die on the same day. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest, who will do according to what is in my heart. I want you to understand something right here. He's talking about Christ. Ready? He's going to raise somebody up. Right? As I was researching this, I, 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 I went to one of my Strong's or one of my other books that I, that I have, and I typed in, in 1 Samuel, where was Jesus mentioned, and it came up to this verse. Because, you see, the Lord had come to this place where he already had figured out that there was a ton of people that he had anointed, and they all turned and inserted head here, and that was the end of that. They all left him. Like Saul, Saul became full of pride. And that's why Saul was handed over to David. <coughs> because Saul stopped following God. David, when he stopped following God, what did he do? Well, he wrote Psalms and he pleaded with God to knit his soul back together. David understood that his soul had been broken through, through the trauma of looking at Bathsheba naked. And then the trauma of looking at Bathsheba naked brought what? Murder brought lying, brought all these things into David's life. And what did that do? It took David so far away from God that the anointing was broken. So here, here, Eli the prophet, or well, this is a prophecy against the house of Eli, here we're seeing that I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to my way and what is in my heart and, in the, and what is in my mind. 
and will stir, uh, will firmly establish his priestly house, and they will minister before my anointed one always. <coughs> Jesus had the mind of Christ. He had the will of Christ. Or he had the will of God, the mind of God. And, and, and what else? In the heart of the Father. He was raised up. <coughs> this is what he had been raised up for. To become the greatest gift that man would ever understand. You know, it, it's kind of funny because, you know, it's, it's, it's really strange because um, all throughout our, our years, we, we've been practical gift givers with our kids. You know, we don't give them stupid stuff. We give them practical things. And it's kind of interesting because they look at you like, you know, why you give me gloves? Because you won't get frostbite when you're stuck out in the woods and you're trying to get home. Well, when is that going to happen? You know, a month or two later. Man, those gloves saved my fingers from freezing. Let me tell you what. Yeah, duh. <laughs> Practical. Practical. You know? And, 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 and it's like, you know, we, we gave our daughter a crock pot last year. Oh, uh, it's a crock pot. I said, you're going to need that crock pot. She goes, when? I said, when your stove breaks. <laughs> so all of a sudden she goes, well, my stove's never going to break. I go, okay. Because every stove breaks. <laughs> and so one day she goes, I made chicken stew. I said, why? She goes, stove broke. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was the practical gift for sin? life of Christ. But before we could have that practicality of that gift, we had to first have it become anointed by the Father. It, it had to be so much like the Father that it walked like the Father, it talked like the Father, it thought like the Father. As a matter of fact, it had to be the Father. So Jesus took human form and became the Son. Now, you know, not, not any of us, uh, you know, I surely can't remember coming through the birth canal. But, you know, it's not, it's not one of those wonderful things, you know. Not for the mom who's going, oh my God, move this basketball from me. You know. And I'm sure it's traumatizing for the baby. Because you're going from this nice warm place into this little tunnel. And all of a sudden you're going to be shot out in the world. And you know? And so, and so... And so, you know, it's traumatized. <coughs> and so you have Jesus who, where was he? He was in the throne room of glory. In the throne room. People were worshiping him. There was angels singing. There was amazing things happening. And God says, you gotta go. Well, can't you just like make me appear? <laughs> I, you know, it, it, my warped sense of thought. Thank you, Curtis, <laughs> for reassuring me. Because <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, it's it's like it's it's like you're sitting in your lounge at home, the TV's going, everything's great, it's lovely, it's warm, and all of a sudden you're shot into this place of total darkness. jammed down through a, a garden hose and brought out into this place where all of a sudden you're going, what the heck just happened? In a manger, in a watering trough, in a cave, with a bunch of animals and all these things surrounding you. And the angel's going, oh, yeah. 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 And all this stuff happened. And Mary going, what the heck just happened? And Joseph going, huh? Because, <laughs> you know, fathers become shocked for what, what the heck just happened? <coughs> and the angels are really singing. Because the greatest thing that could ever happen is happening. Come. 
So it also says here, and they will minister before my anointed one always. Then everyone left in your family line will come and bow down before him. For a piece of silver and a loaf of bread and plea of bread is a priestly office so I can have food to eat. Go to verse 3, verse 1, or to chapter 3, verse 1. The Lord calls Samuel. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli in those days. The word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and laid down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. We're in verse 8 or 6, <coughs> chapter 3. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli, said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord has not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lay down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Amen. So, in this place, Samuel was being called by God. God was going to consecrate Samuel at that time. Now, I need, I need you to understand what the word consecrate means. <coughs> the word consecrated means set apart. Remember, it means set apart. So, can I ask you something? How come you being called do not live in a set apart revelation of Christ in your life. Because you've all been consecrated. You've been called for greater things than these. Remember, that's, that's part of that thing. We're consecrated into understanding who Christ is and what He has done. We've been anointed the same thing as the Son to go and what? <coughs> Tell people about Jesus. So God's plan was set, God's plan was to set apart his people to serve him. To be wholly dedicated and to manifest his holiness. That's you. Now the word manifest means to choose in the Hebrew. And it's also a verb, meaning we have to make a decision, and in that decision we need to respond. So we need to make a decision. Do we understand that we are anointed and consecrated by God to do something greater than we are doing today? Just like Christ. He was called, he was anointed, he was consecrated, and he chose to do what God had called him to do. And he made a decision, which is the action to step forward and become the gift that would bring salvation. You have that gift, by the way. You have the gift that brings salvation. You don't save people, but you have the same gift that brings salvation. Amen. And all you have to do... Oh, here's this other thing. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me just go here real quick. We can choose to be anointed, and we can choose to be made set apart. And this is how, by believing and listening, which is very important... And then we have to step out in faith. So there's the action. Allowing God to test us and purify us. <clears throat> then we choose and select to walk in His way, which is barar in the Hebrew, Hebrew B-A-R-A-R. -A -R. <clears throat> and this primitive root also means to, think about this from Friday, brighten and shine. The soul was meant to shine. 
soul is meant to shine. What? It shines the glory of God. That's what the soul does. So how can our soul shine the glory of God if we are not living in the anointing and the consecration, 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 consecration of Christ? I'll get it right in a minute. My tongue just needs to catch up with my mind. How, how do we live in that place if we have not accepted that? We need to accept that. Stay away from me now. We, we need to receive that and accept that. How do we do that? Through accepting the fact that Jesus Christ became the gift that we save. Samuel chose to listen to God and in his choosing was consecrated to serve God and manifest who he was. One of the things in the manifestation of God in our lives that we must do, that we must do is purge the us out of us and replace it with all of him. Notice, notice Jesus took all of himself and replaced it with God. And in that, he could live the life of the Father. And in that, he would say, it is not I, but my Father's words. Because, see, we don't want to put us in it, we want Jesus in it. And so when we speak, we need to speak the words of the Father. I love what Mike said. He didn't know this message was coming. Every time he comes to me, this is where I point him. When people come to me, this is where they're getting pointed. You don't want to hear the truth? Don't come to me. Because this is where I'm going. It's right here in this. A lot of people don't come to me because they don't want to hear this. They want me to do this. Pat, 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 pat. Oh, let's, let's see a little pat on the bottom. Yes, you're okay. Here, let me change you while you're here. So you can wallow in the poop that you're going to be wallowing in for the rest of your life. Because you don't want to hear this. I always quote the word. Because this sets you free. You, you know? That's why Jesus always said, not my words, but the Father's. Because, because see, in wisdom comes God. And if, if this is the anointed word of God, and it's been consecrated to do greater things in your life than anything any one of us could speak out to, then this is where you need to go. Amen. Don't watch those morons on television tell you what to do, because they don't have a clue. This happens through testing. Yes, the Lord will allow us to be tested to bring in the purity of who He is. This brings in the shine that we are beginning to see in the soul. This is the glory of the Lord revealed in the believer. As we go through this process, we enter into this word, which is temuna. Temuna, which means in the Hebrew form, we enter into the form of Christ. We become Christ like. And in Christ's likeness, what do we reveal? The heart of the Father. Amen. That's what we did. We revealed the heart of the Father through Christ likeness. Where does this all come from? From a choice. From a choice. I can choose to live in who I am, or I can choose to live in who he has called me to be. Much like Samuel, Samuel, Samuel chose to live in the calling of the Lord. So as we lose ourselves, we become more like him. And in that, we begin to reveal the likeness of Christ in us. Found in John 4, 17, and in 1 John 2, 6. Paul would say to the church in Corinth in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. So how do, how do we reveal Christ? Actions. Actions. People could care less what you have to say nowadays. But they're going to watch how you live when you profess being a believer. And they're going to watch every move you make and watch everything you do. And that will be the illustration of whether or not they choose to.
to walk in what you walk in and walk how you walk. That's how we do it. The disciples were told to follow Jesus. Come, follow me. I will, I will teach you. I will make you. I will show you how to be who I am. He, he taught them to heal people. The only thing they couldn't do was die on the cross. He taught them to lead people. He anointed them to go out and what? Baptize. Huh? We're no different than they are. We're the, we're the same type of people. I'm going to wrap this up. And in Ephesians 4, 23 to 22 through 24, he would write to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God. Isn't that interesting? So, so who else was in the likeness of God? Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ was formed in the likeness of God. And we're to do what? When we receive Christ, we are to put on that likeness. We are to put on that likeness. And if you, if you haven't figured out who Christ is and how he walked, start in Matthew and go. Start in the book of Matthew and read who he is, what he did, and how he walked. Because that's the likeness of Christ. That's the likeness of Christ. And walk in righteousness and holiness. Now in the Greek word manifest is phanaru. And it means to make known by teaching. How do we teach? Again, by illustration. That's how we teach. Don't say, don't do as I say. Do as I do. Walk in the way that he has taught me to walk. Walk in the way that he has called you. To make the life we have been called to visible and actual. I think of Mark 4, 21 through 22, where it talks of the lampstand. The life of Christ through consecration and manifestation must be revealed. <coughs> it is not meant to be hidden or hoarded. In Matthew 10, 5 through 8, it says, freely give and freely receive. You've been given. Receive. And through action is given away. With every head bowed and every eye closed. The word of God tells me that no man will stand before the Father unless he stands before the Son first. Let me get ready for communion real quick. And the only way to do that is this. Father God, come into my heart, save me. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me, Lord. Allow me to be whole. Allow me to be made righteous. Transform me. Consecrate me. Manifest your life in me. An easier way, Father, for you. <coughs> Save me. Come into my heart of all. That evening. So if you're here and you've never said that prayer, if you've never asked Jesus Christ to be a part of your life, then I just want you to raise your hand real quick and put it back down. If that you just prayed that prayer, Lord, come into my heart. Save me. Save me, Lord. Father God, we just come before you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Father. Allow us to be the illustrations of who you are, Lord. Allow us to manifest your life through our actions, Father. The word says, let our words be few and our actions be many. Father, just allow our actions to speak, Father. Lord, just bless us specially. Allow fear to not enter in, Lord. Allow us to be bold and shine. Shine for you, Father. Be that city on the hill. Father, we just thank you, love you, and praise you, Lord.
In your precious name we pray, Father. Amen. We're going to do communion real quick. And they're getting ready. You can pass that out, ladies. He's back there. It's the funniest thing. I'm down here praying. And, you know, he's, he's looking around the corner and pointing a finger at me. He's like, I see you. <laughs>